Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Elizabeth Shoe and Canis factory uh, near Louisville, Kentucky. I'm here with our technical services manager, Jeff Lucas. Jeff is one of our uh, younger employees. He's only been here for 33 years. And I've asked Jeff to join me to help explain further the concerns that I've begun to share with you uh, when it comes to the precision turrets within tablet presses. So thank you, Jeff, for, for joining me today and taking time. Thank you, Scott. Welcome to Louisville. My pleasure, yeah. my pleasure. So Jeff, we, we have a sample turret uh, here from our production activity, which is behind us. And uh, we're sitting in a test area that we use for final acceptance of uh, tablet presses correct. that we manufacture here in Louisville. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Right? The tablet press that we make here is our Sentry mm -hmm. brand, which is what? It's an industrial machine. It's based off the older Stokes DD2 model press. Uh, very durable, very industrial machine. And uh, we've had great success with it. Okay, great. So we're taking advantage today to uh, share with you uh, some of the finer points. And I'd like to begin, Jeff, by asking you somewhat about tablet quality. And I'm wondering, you know, when you consider a turret, what are the most common areas that can impact the quality of a solid dose tablet coming right. off the press? What we see the most uh, during the inspection of our turrets uh, when they arrive is uh, Majority of the punch boards are oversized, which typically leads to tablet defects or the overall quality of the tablets. Uh, once the punch boards become worn and oversized, it allows for tip deflection on the upper punches. Of course, once that comes in effect, you start causing damage to not only the, the tablet itself or the defects of the tablet, but also damage to the tips of the upper punches and also the entrance to the die itself. Okay, okay. very yeah. good. That's the most common. Okay. Uh, when I consider the tab, the tablet quality, uh, I also then wonder about the yield of the press mm -hmm. in general. And I understand that if I have a bad tablet, I've got scrap and it impacts my yield. Correct. But when operating a press, uh, what's more common? sources of yield loss mm -hmm. and powder and right. how does that occur right. on, a, on a turret? Good question. The, the most common yield loss that we see or hear from other customers is just simply powder escaping from the feeder that's not being compressed into a tablet. Uh, when that happens, there's a couple of variations of why. Uh, one, of course, is the feeder itself. The other is the uh, deterioration of the die table surface. Uh, especially with the very abrasive products or feeders not set properly. Uh, what happens is the die table surface becomes scored or worn. That allows the product to escape from under the feeder and not actually get into the dies to be compressed into powder. And that's really just direct yield loss. And okay. what's not compressed is usually either swept onto the floor or sucked up into the uh, dust collection system. Okay. so. So in your experience, uh, is the losses due to just general powder versus scrap tablets? Is it equal or is one more or less? Typically, I see yield loss in the powder form more than what I see as far as quality of tablets. That's where when the quality of tablets, uh, especially on the higher end uh, production machines, use a reject gate system. That can be monitored typically by what goes into the reject bin. Whereas with product actually coming off the table and not being compressed, that tends to get lost out of sight, out of mind more than the quality itself. Okay, yeah. okay. So we're touching on the loss of powder, the scrap of tablets. Uh, but now if I think about just the wear and tear mm -hmm. on the tablet press <clears throat> as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, how can a turret wear and how can it impact other components within the system? What, what are the risks or what might be damaged? Yeah, then, then you're talking severe cases of wear within the turret when it starts to adversely affect other components. 
such as uh, the camming system within this, uh, the, uh, the press, maybe even the cam body itself that houses those cams, it can become damaged, especially when the turret becomes worn to the point it actually wobbles in the machine. Depending on the machine itself, of course, uh, when that happens, you also get damage through the pressure rows. So it's kind of a chain reaction, and it's something that you kind of want to stay on top of as far as monitoring what level of wear uh, your turret or the condition is in. Okay. So we have to watch our time, and we've discussed many attributes of a turret. But I think for our customers today, I'd like to know, can we recommend three things that our customers can take action yeah. now to help yeah. improve and secure the operation of their turret. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, three of the things that come to mind that I avidly uh, stress during my training seminars, uh, which two can actually be done at the machine rather easily. Uh, first is making sure that the lubrication system for both the upper and the lower punches is functioning as it should. Okay, making sure that the upper punch, uppers and lower punch boards are getting the adequate oil and the correct oil. Okay. Second is dust collection. Make sure that the dust collection on the machine is adequately pulling those fine particles and those dust away from the punches. Because let's face it, if it wasn't for the dust, a lot of the problems with the tablet press would probably go away. Okay. The third is proper training with the operators. A lot of the damage that we see to turrets are just from mishandling. Mishandling or installing the tooling incorrect or even the feeders themselves. So making sure that the operators are trained properly will ensure that you'll get the life you need, not only from the tooling and the components, but also from the heart of the machine, and that's the turret. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jeff. You're I, welcome. I hope these elements are, are realistic and available you know, for people to consider immediately. You mentioned the setup and the training. Absolutely. And I can very good. add, you know, I can add to that scenario that you and, and our technical team is available to assist our customers directly on site as well as in our own factory. So I don't want to overlook the fact that Elizabeth Shoeing Kinnis is available to come to your factory and help you manage these problems and help improve the performance of your turrets and your presses. So thank you again for listening and thanks, thank for you. Your, thanks for your comments. Thank you.